This time on the show, malware analysis and controlling your computer over Twitter. But one thing you won't see is Brian Brushwood without his hair up. Yeah, because I'm wearing a hat. That's a kitchen! Welcome to Scam School, the only show that... Wow, wow, wow. Yeah. Yeah, hook me up, I'm ready. This episode of Hack 5 is brought to you by Gamefly, go-to assist express, remote support made easy, and domain.com. Got a great idea? It all starts with a great domain. Hey guys, great show this week. Shannon's coming to us with some remote access Twitter apps, and then I'm talking about sandboxes for malware analysis. Uh, oh, some news on the portable studios. You know that Shannon's using one out in Missouri right now, and I've also just delivered them to both Jason Applebaum and Mubix. So looking forward to seeing some segments from them on the show soon, which will be awesome. And I do need to thank you guys for all of the warm wishes. I got a ton of emails uh, since the last episode talking about getting laid off while I was on vacation, no less. But, uh, but thank you so much. All of those are just warm the soul and have been encouragement to just go ahead and pursue this full time. So you know, I think we'll make it work. Um, and it's just going to mean a better show for you guys in the end. So I'm staying positive, and that's the idea. So. To reiterate the plan, it is that uh, I'm selling everything uh, and then getting my life down to a couple duffel bags, which is going to be interesting and sweet and stuff like that. Um, and then motorcycling across country where I will rendezvous with Shannon in San Francisco. So uh, if you'd like to get involved with that project, there will be some information on hack5.org this week. Um, Anyway, enough of me rambling. If you really want to hear me ramble, tune into um, NSFW with Brian Brushwood this week. But, uh, oh, one other thing. I'm going to be in Orlando, Florida for a family thing this weekend, but I think I've got like all day Monday or something or Sunday. I can't remember. Anyway, pay attention to uh, me on uh, Twitter if you're in the area, uh, twitter.com slash hack5darren if you want to meet up. Um, and yeah, <laughs> let's just go ahead and check in with Shannon and see what's going on with the LAN party. Shannon? Our next LAN party, powered by the Varsity Esports League, is Left 4 Dead. We'll be playing on Saturday, March 27th at game.hack5.org. And a special shout out goes out to The Vessel for their LAN party support. You can check them out at thevessel.com. I'll see you guys in the game. You may have noticed a zippier hack5.org with the beginning of the season. And you guessed it, we're at domain.com. They've got some seriously cool web hosting plans starting at under six bucks a month or check out their deluxe plan for $8.75, which includes one-click installs for lots of popular open source software like Joomla, Drupal, or my favorite, WordPress. With unlimited traffic and free web builders, Domain.com is the fast and easy way to get your website online. They've got fast DNS and super reliable and inexpensive web hosting that's suitable for anything from a resume to a big site like hack5.org. And let me just say that their quality and service is top-notch. Email or tweet them and you'll see what I'm talking about. So, show your support for Hack5 and continue to make Domain.com the largest web and domain hosting company in the world and save 15% off at the same time. That's right, Hack5's got you the hookup at 15% off when you check out with coupon code HAK5. Got a great idea? It all starts with a great domain at Domain.com. Last week, we took our monkey frolicking through the internet's famous red light district, intentionally picking up some malware to see how some consumer sandboxing solutions held up. And we got a lot of email about our methods. So before we go any further, I want to clarify one thing. The purpose of this test was to see how some consumer sandboxing solutions would hold up to complete noobs. And trust me, only a complete noob would use Internet Explorer 6. That said, Komodo's latest internet security beta and Sandboxy performed admirably. And had I just opened all of the malware in Sandboxy, this would have been smiles across the board. But Sandboxy made it really easy for me to save the files back to the real file system and double click with reckless abandon. Which is exactly what noobs do. But enough about monkeys and noobs and whores, today we're focusing on a different kind of Sandbox. In our experiment last week, I ran a bit of malware through VirusTotal.com, 
And I know it's a service that we've talked about on the show, but essentially, if you're new to it, you upload your phishing files to them, and they provide you a report of the findings of about 40 different antivirus engines. It's an invaluable tool for any security researcher. It's really nice to see what those 40 different antivirus engines all report, the signatures they've seen. But then that asks the question, how do antivirus systems and intrusion detection systems identify malware anyway? Malware itself is a pretty generic term. It encompasses viruses, worms, Trojan horses, rootkits, spyware, whatever. The basic principle is that it's software designed with hostile intent that compromises your computer without your consent. Malware is also really difficult to detect. Traditional antivirus software looks for characteristics like bytecode sequences and stuff to identify malicious code. But nowadays, malware changes its appearance to avoid detection. And there's so much of this malicious software appearing on the net now that traditional methods of identifying the bad stuff, or like reverse engineering the code, just isn't effective. And that's what brings us back to the sandbox. Hi, can I get a small banana sundae? Thank you. A CW sandbox is an automated malware analysis sandbox. It works simply by running suspected malware through a live environment, simulated Windows OS, if you will. And as opposed to trying to break the actual malware executable and figure out what the code does, we just monitor everything that it does when it's run in a live environment. So all of the network traffic it generates, all of the DLLs it loads, any changes to the file system, or even the Windows registry, we just watch. Now this is all achieved using a technique called API hooking, which basically means that whenever the malware calls the Windows application programmer's interface to go ahead and do something like, I don't know, connect to an IP address or modify a file, what it's actually doing is talking to the CW Sandbox monitoring software that logs all of this and then it goes ahead and actually performs the action. So you can kind of think of it as a sort of operating system man in the middle. I think I love bananas more than the monkey. Mm. So once a suspected malware sample is run through the tool, it generates a report that actually shows you everything that the executable is actually doing, which is really nice because it's machine readable and it can be then fed into another system like an antivirus or an intrusion detection system so that they can monitor for you know, other similar behavior. You can try it out yourself at mwanalysis.com. They have a page where you can upload your own files and get an emailed report. You can even upload a zip file of a whole bunch of junk if you'd like. Uh, there's even a commercial edition that you can license at sunbeltsandbox.com. Uh, it's not going to replace like a desktop antivirus or anything like that, but if you're curious about what a process actually does, you know, some of the things that we kind of threw at the IE6 sandboxes last week, it's definitely worth a look. So if you've got any questions about this stuff, go ahead and hit up feedback at hack5.org. And in just a moment, we're going to go over to Shannon for trivia. But first, I'm going to get another banana sundae for the monkey. This week's trivia is, contracted by Sony in 2006, Fixstar Solutions, formerly TerraSoft Solutions, provides a Linux operating system for the PS3 based on what distribution? Enter for your chance to win an autographed piece of the Hack5 set by putting in your answer at hack5.org slash trivia. Good luck. Hey Shannon, how's Missouri? Good. I'm helping my mom out a lot with the house. How are things back in Virginia? Okay, but I miss Kirby. You mean this Kirby? Yeah, that's my little <laughs> furball. Oh, hang on. You're running Windows 7, right? Yeah. Okay, I've got just the thing. Click my GoTo Assist Express link. Okay. So Windows 7 lets PC makers change the login screen with their own logos, but we can use it too. Just open the registry editor and browse to H key local machine, software, Microsoft, Windows, current version, authentication, logon, UI, and background, and then double click OEM background and change the value to one. Now open your system32 folder and browse to OOBE and info, and then create a new folder called backgrounds. In there, just put a JPEG of Kirby under 256 kilobytes and name it backgrounddefault.jpg. Now you'll see a picture of Kirby every time you log on. Oh, that's awesome. 
or you can use Loopang's log on screen rotator software to show a different photo every time you log on. Sweet, but why is my computer freaking out? Uh, yeah, sorry. Kirby's using GoToAssist Express now. <laughs> Quit wasting time trying to fix technical problems blindly over the phone. Support smarter with GoToAssist Express from Citrix. Easily view and control another computer online so you can quickly resolve technical issues. It's easy for the customer and easy for you. Reduce travel time and support costs with instant remote assistance. Start a session in just one click. Transfer files, get diagnostics reports, and chat live on PC or Mac. So next time you're called for troubleshooting, remember go to assist.com slash hack5. You'll get a free 30-day trial and support us when you sign up at go to assist.com slash hak5. View more great Windows 7 tips at revision3.com slash go to assist express. Well, there's no denying the power of running your own SSH or VNC service at home for remote access. Wouldn't it be cool if you could just simply text message your computer and say something like, hey, what's your external IP address? Or can you go download this file? Or how about sending me a screenshot? Well, if Robin Wood has taught us anything with Creo C2, controlling your computer over social media, or even a botnet for that matter, is totally possible. But now it's time for something a lot more user friendly. This week, Shannon investigates Tweet My PC. So you're leaving from work on a Friday. You get on the highway and crap, you forgot to lock your office computer. There's nobody still at the office to lock it for you, so anybody could go in there and see any documents or data that's still on your desktop. That's why Tweet My PC is such a good program for this. It's a very simple, simple software application that uses the .NET framework and VB.NET to control and access your computer from anywhere just by using a Twitter message. Now usually you need a server between two computers for them to talk, or you need a static IP, and that's something that most people just don't have. This is why the simplicity of Twitter is so useful. Developers can use Twitter to create any programs, and you can tweet messages from your laptop as long as you have an internet connection, or a cell phone. Now, of course, this isn't gonna replace VNC, just like Darren said, but if you just need to send a quick message to your computer to shut it down or lock it, this program is perfect. So let's check out the setup. There have been plenty of those remote control your PC over Twitter programs before, but usually there's some kind of bizarre Perl script and you have to know something about programming in the first place just to get started. Not with this one. Go over to tweetmypc.codeplex.com, grab the setup zip from the download section, unzip it, double click and click next, next, finish, Bob's your uncle, and then you're done. The only tricky part is configuring it. You will need a dedicated Twitter username and password. This will remain private, so you can pretty much name it anything. And then you also need a Gmail username and password. If you're anything like me and you pretty much live inside Gmail, you may want to consider getting a new dedicated username and password for that Gmail account. And it's kind of a security measure and protection for you. All right, let's check out how to use this thing. Ah! Oh, shit. All right, now that we're all configured, what can you do with it? Well, all the commands are listed at the Tweet My PC website. For example, if you tweet it with IP, it'll reply back with the public IP address, which is great if you're running any kind of servers at home. Or you could tweet it with ping followed by an IP address and it'll reply back with the results, which is pretty nice, but honestly, if you're that deep into troubleshooting your home network, you might just want to use a real VNC or SSH client anyway. The download command is very nice as well. I actually got a lot of use out of that one, especially if, you wanna, if you're if you out at a pub and you need to download the newest Hack 5 episode and you want it to be ready for when you get home to watch, or you can just subscribe to us on iTunes. Do it. There's also a lot of very, not very useful commands like uh, wallpaper, because you obviously need to know your wallpaper while you're out, or OS. You didn't forget what your OS is while you're on vacation, right? Please tell me you didn't forget that. Oh boy. Still, what's, what makes this tool really valuable is the fact that you can create your own custom commands. Like you can fire up BitTorrent and download some legally, very legal files. Or you could defrag your hard drive with Ultra Defrag from last week's Snubs Report. Because you're ultra cool, right? Okay, so I have Tweet My PC all set up and I'm gonna type in lock. I'm sending this text message to Twitter. 
Now Tweet My PC on my computer is going to check these messages every one minute. And once it sees that I just Twittered lock, it'll actually lock my computer. And now we wait for it to lock. <laughs> it locked! It works! Yes! Cool! Okay, now I'm gonna hit shut down and send. Because even though it's in lock, it'll still check my tweets every minute and it'll eventually shut it down. Awesome! Okay, let's face it. Tweet My PC is not going to replace SSH or VNC, but it's relatively easy to set up, you don't have to have any programming knowledge, and it relies on social media like Twitter and Gmail. So as long as the fail whale doesn't strike, you'll be able to text message your computer while you're at a bar alone, not talking to girls. You know, we do exist on the internet and in RL. Get 15 days of free games at Gamefly.com slash hack5. Who's Gamefly? Only the largest online video game rental service, offering over 7,000 new and classic titles across all consoles and handhelds. Rent one to four games at a time, starting at just $15.95 a month with no late fees or due dates. If you like the game you're playing, you can keep it at a discounted price, and Gamefly will send you the case and manual for free. Support Hack5 for free and fun with a 15-day trial from Gamefly.com slash hack5. So that about wraps up another episode of Hack 5. Remember to friend and follow us on Twitter and Facebook, grab some hack swag at the Hack Shop, and send us your feedback at feedback at hack5.org. We love to hear what you think, both good and the bad, and a lot of times we put your questions up on the air. Until next week, I'm Shannon Morse. You're watching Hack 5. Trust your techno Where did Kirby go? You're gonna be famous one of these. You know what you are? You're e-famous. Like that cat lady from Rocco's Modern Life. Ah. I just like making funny faces on the camera. Kirby! Me nicky nickel!